What's going on guys? Joe from Total Justice Gaming here with another deck profile for you guys. Uh, this time it is my version of Oni Assassins. We let Thor run through his. My build is much different than his right now. Uh, uh, we've been collaborating back and forth and tuning each other's. I decided to take mine a little bit in a variant from his at the moment. His is much more aggressive. I'm trying to scale my aggression back and go a bit more control scheme. Uh, so first off, as you see, I was very lucky. I was able to pull the character flag or was given to me. We opened a lot of boxes that day, guys. We opened like 28 boxes or something. And uh, my buddy, unlike Thor, uh, who uses Kitabuki, mine is Red Lady Oni Kuriha. Uh, she's very, very versatile and uh, does just a lot for very minimal cost of one gauge. And plus, I just love the artwork on her. All the Oni's artwork is fantastic, but she really stood out above the rest. Uh, so she is the buddy for this deck. Uh, we're going to hop right into it. So first off, I'm running a single copy of uh, Half Fiend Kid Yase. Uh, the reason why I'm running this is when it comes into play from Ambush, uh, I can choose an opponent's item uh, and pay a gauge and destroy it. Uh, she's also okay at a size 1, being a 2 on one uh, Stats will get boosted, so she'll at least become a 3-1-1, which is, again, respectable for a size 0. She does get to come in via ambush, so I'm really, really happy with that. Uh, next up, we're running four copies of... I don't know if I can get that on the camera like that. I can Cool. Uh, four copies of Lesser Fiend Amina... Amano Jaku. Uh, he's a 2 1 1, so again, with the weapon, he'll be boosted up to at least a 3. 3 1 1, which is, again, acceptable for a size 0. Uh, what makes him so good and right, why I want to run him absolutely at the max is because when he comes into play, you just draw a card. Uh, he has to come in via ambush to get that skill, but you'll always have him to be able to ambush. You have plenty of cards that let you set up the ambush, so you're going to be able to draw very, very quickly. So he is definitely worth maxing out at a 4. Uh, next up, I am running one copy of White Fiend, uh, White Fiend Kid Toraguma. Uh, the reason is, is because he's a 5 one, one 5 is a magic number for buddy fight with the weapon equipped that we'll be talking about later. He's going to be a 6, which is even better. Uh, his call cost is simply put a card from your hand face down to this card's soul. So he lets you set up ambush. Uh, he hits for really good numbers. And on top of that, he has move, meaning you can move him in front of you to trigger ambush, making sure they have to attack through him to get that ambush to trigger. Um, and then I'm running one copy of Dustfiend Yagyu, or Yagyo. Um... Another reason, again, he's like uh, Toraguma. He's a 5 1 1. Um, when he has a field, choose a monster on your opponent's field. Uh, put a soul from chosen card into his or her drop zone. Then, if he enters the field via ambush, put a soul from the chosen card into his or her drop zone. Uh, so, he gets to come into ambush. He has good stats. Uh, he's really only toolbox in here to deal with soul decks because you can constantly recur him with uh, various cards in the deck to get rid of the opponent's soul and potentially get rid of two soul. So I'm only really running him at a one of. Uh, next up, I am running four Fiend Gaze uh, Io. Uh, he is a one, two, one. He doesn't really have great stats, but I'm running him at a four of because when he enters the field, choose an Oni Assassin on your field, including himself. Uh, look at the top three cards of your deck, put up to one among them, face down into the chosen card soul, and put the rest on the bottom of your deck. Uh, you're going to be going through your deck very quickly uh, with how I set this up. So Ayu lets you choose something to give it uh, to set up an ambush. You can choose yourself uh, as the target. And plus the cards don't go to discard pile so they can filter and you can shuffle them. And you'll be really, really well off. So I'm definitely running him at a 4 of. Next up, we are running... Three Fiend of a Hundred Flugs, Rashomon. 
hear that name a lot in various things. So Rashomon is a 6-2-1 uh, with the call cost of look at the top three cards of your deck, much like Ayo. Uh, choose one among them, put it face down to the card soul, and put the rest into your drop zone and pay a gate. So again, he has Soul Guard. Um, he can... Which is unlike the rest of the Onis that just go to the discard pile and then you ambush. He actually gets to stay on the field as an additional attack or additional defense while triggering ambush if he gets hit, which makes him just invaluable. On top of that, uh, you get to uh, somewhat choose as you get to scry three uh, from the top and choose what goes in. Unfortunately, the rest do go to the drop zone, but as we're going to uh, look into the deck a little more, I have a way of getting stuff out with my buddy. So, he's very good. I do like him a whole lot. A lot of people are asking why we aren't running the double attacker that is uh, the size 2 to our Aguma clone. It's because uh, Kuraha and Rashomon just are very, very versatile and uh, just have much better effects. I understand the other guy, I believe he's a 5-2 with double attack and move, which is very good, but Rashomon has Soul Guard, it lets you look at the top three. Kuriha, when we get to her, she does a lot of good stuff, it's why I made her the buddy. So those two usually outshine the other dude. Following along, we are going to be running three Sturdioni, a lad from Kiba. Let me pull him up. Um, so he is the Toraguma clone at size 3. Uh, call cost, put two cards from your hand face down to the soul. Pay 2 gauge. He has move, double attack, and soul guard. Very respectable stats at an 8 to 4. Uh, 8 clears out a lot of things in this game, save for some higher up uh, hero world, and Darkness Dragon world, and Zwei, and Star Dragon world stuff. But he still hits for great numbers. He's got double attack, more importantly as soul guard, and you get to uh, pick and choose what goes into his soul, I mean you can set up ambush, so you can go into your size zero that lets you draw a card. He stays on the field, you get another soul, and you get another free card, and another free attacker or defender. So he puts in a lot of oomph. Fuller really likes this card only for the fact that he really kind of looks like Osmodi, uh, some Katana World version of Osmodi. I can see where he's coming from. But we're playing three of him. Uh, next up, we're playing three of the big, big boss. Uh, Kitabuki. Uh, Oni boss Kitabuki. Move that just forward a little more for you guys to be able to see a little bit better. Fortunately, I did not get the SP. Uh, we I let Four get the SP and let Four bling out all his deck because he really wanted to run this too. After I sat and talked with him and showed him what my plans were, he got real hyped for the deck. It hasn't let either one of us down yet. Um, so I let him have all the reverse hollow cards, and I we got the SP for him. Bling out a deck is just not my thing, guys. It's just, I just want to be able to get the deck and finish it, and then if I want to up its value and go max rarity, as I believe the phrase is coined, I'll do that later, but my focus is really on building the deck. But I'm sorry, I digress. Uh, so we run three uh, Oni Boss Kitabuki. If you're familiar with One Punch Man, there's a slight reference as the giant monster is not Kitabuki, but over on his shoulder, if you look really hard, you'll see him over there. Uh, you also got to see that in the anime uh, last week, as that one was a assassin Oni Assassination or Oni Assassin themed episode. Uh, so his cold cost is pay two. When it enters the field, destroy a monster in your opponent's field. Then if this card is, uh, enters the field by ambush, deal damage equal to the opponent's size of the destroyed card, meaning they can lose up to three damage or possibly four if they're running that one specific Ozzy to Haka that's a size four. I believe, I think he can be targeted by opponent's effects. It's been a while since I've seen that card, guys. Uh, he also has Ambush Me. He comes into play, and he is just the bane of the existence. Fuller is just 
me and him have lamented calling Kitabuki on each other so many times now already. And he has double attack and swings at a very generous eight, much like Sturdy Oni. Again, he has uh, credit two, which is very respectable, considering you're really going to be dealing it potentially four damage and then burn them for up to three to four damage on top of that. And unlike Kid Oni, he's a little bit more sturdier at a defense of 5. However, 5 is that magic number we always strive to hit. So he can be taken out pretty easily. And then finally, we are going to get to the buddy. I, For whatever reason, I really like talking about her. Uh, she's just what really pulled me into that deck. And that is Red Lady Oni Kriha. Uh, she is the buddy for my deck. Uh, she's decent at a 5-2-1. Very little on the butt, but very heavy on top. Uh, we will let the Andy window lie where it is. Um, cold cost is pay gauge. When she enters the field, put up to one card with ambush that is not curry hot from your drop zone into your hand. Then if this card enters the field by ambush, you may put a card from your hand into the soul of an Oni Assassin on your field. She also has ambush and move, so she can tutor out of the discard pile for you. She enters the enters via ambush. Uh, she lets you set up an ambush on either herself or another card in play. She has move, meaning she forces the target to attack through her and trigger ambush. Uh, and then you get a life back since it's my buddy. And you get to do all this stuff for... Um, one gauge. Uh, so she's very, very versatile. Again, I chose her solely for the artwork when she initially was uh, debuted in previews over on Buddy Spoiler. Uh, I just love her to death. She is like one of my favorite cards of Buddy Fight of all time, just from her versatility, the artwork, uh, what she does for the deck. She's just everything I could ever hope for in a card. Uh, we'll move on. I'll stop gushing. Uh, next up, we are running three Dark Arm Soaring Blade. Get that pulled up here. Uh, this is a 3 2 uh, with an equipped cost of pay gauge. All only assassins on the field get plus 1000 power. That does make a difference because that means we get to hit for even higher numbers. Uh, getting over that 5000 threshold that I talk about is really important and making sure that when we team attack uh, with our size zeros uh, and uh, potentially the weapon, we're hitting at a strong 6. Um, yeah, it does say monster, so it can't target itself. Uh, and then it gets the even better added ability of when your monsters in the field via ambush, choose a monster on the opponent's field. Uh, you may pay gauge. If you do destroy that card, it only activates once per turn. So this goes back into our control that we want to have. Um, this lets me destroy a target on top of getting whatever bonus I receive from ambush. So it's really important that we hit this. So I'm running a three of, I'm considering bumping it up to a four of, but we're also testing out a second weapon that I thought about as soon as uh, Oni Assassin was debuted. And that is uh, Ninja Blade uh, Chiri Zakura. Uh, it's normally a 2-2, it has no equip cost, and it has the counter speed of, during your attack phase, destroy a monster on your field. If you do, this thing gets 10,000 power, meaning this becomes a 7-2, which means I get over a lot. Um, and potentially, and it lets me trigger ambush because I'm putting a card from my field into the drop zone, meaning it so goes with it, so I get to trigger ambush, meaning I get to apply just any effect I want, what, I, what I've set up, and it lets me have potentially a fourth or even fifth attack. So I'm running this out of one of right now because I want to keep being able to get Soaring Blade because that is the more uh, that is the better weapon for his control piece, but if I do need to be aggressive or I need to hit a high number that my Onis aren't being able to hit on their own, I am running Ninja Blade. Um, next up, we are going to be running two of the Impact. Uh, I have a third one in Cyborg. Uh, this is Dark Skill Dark Skill Airy Wailing. I initially dismissed this because I just wasn't thinking. Uh, that does happen time to time. 
Uh, this has a call cost of pay to gauge, and then I get to choose one of the two abilities. Choose an only assassin or field and put up the two cards from your deck face down into the chosen soul and shuffle the deck. So if we have, like, say, Sturdy Oni Lad and he has no soul anymore, and we get to our final phase, uh, we can load him back up, and he's got uh, two more soul of our choice, meaning we can set up the ambush. Or we can counter speed and put all soul from all cards on the field into the drop zone. So this is what we're I've been using this for because this hits prism. This hits uh, just a myriad of things because you're not specifically targeting anything on the card. Meaning it gets around those blanket effects uh, cannot be targeted. Well, you're not targeting it. It's a blanket effect. So when the AOE goes off, uh, it hits everything. So I believe it gets around it. I could be wrong. If I am wrong, guys, please feel free to correct me in the comments. It helps me learn. Uh, so I'm running this right now to two, but I do pack a third one in the sideboard. I really, really like this now. Again, I was initially dismissed because it doesn't deal final damage, but I wasn't looking at it in the way I needed to be, and then once it got explained to me by Fuller and Trey, I was like, oh no, I need to definitely run this. Uh, next up are our spells. We are running a lot of three ofs. Uh, so starting us off is House of Assassins, Oni Convoy. Uh, this is a set spell, and it's got an activated ability. Put a card face down into the soul of an Oni Assassin. If you do draw a card, only once per turn. And I can only set one Oni Convoy. Uh, on my field. So this lets me get some forethought, uh, set up ambush, get a draw, get to draw a card. Uh, this lets me replenish Solgar to uh, either uh, Rashomon or Lad from Kiba. Well, again, once again, setting up ambush. So this is a really, really good card. Uh, I know a lot of people are running this at a four of. I'm probably going to bump this back up to a four of. I just got to figure out where I need to make the cuts. My deck is currently at 50. I am starting to consider bumping this up to at least 54 to 55 cards just because I need more room for spells and to flesh out some of the more obviously needed four ofs like uh, Oni Convoy here. So, and that'll probably be the first deck I've run above 50. I usually try to get it at 50 just to keep consistency. But we're currently running the set of three. Uh, next up, we are running three uh, Banquets for the Unrighteous. Uh, let me pull that up. Um, so, this is... Uh, Free costed, uh, you get to choose one of the two following abilities. You can only pay bank for the unrighteous once per turn. I can either uh, look at the top three cards of my deck or scry three, however we want to denote it. Choose a monster from them, among them, and put it into your hand. Put the rest into your drop zone. So this kind of acts like Rashomon, uh, to where I get to look at the top three and grab something I need. So this helps me get consistency. Or I can put a card from my drop zone face down in the soul of monster in your field. Or this also helps let me replenish Kid from Oni, Kid or Lad from Kiba, or Rashomon's uh, soul and set up an ambush. Uh, forcing them to go through it and trigger the ambush. Very, very versatile card. I like it. I'm running it out of three. Uh, I was originally running this out of four of, but I had to cut room for the next card we're talking about. Uh, this is Midnight Bodyguard. Uh, where are you? I forgot to pull that up on my queue. Alright, so Midnight Bodyguard. Sorry for the wait, guys. Put that better in frame. Uh, Midnight Bodyguard. I can only cast this uh, during my opponent's turn, only if I have an uh, only assassin on the field. Uh, it nullifies the attack, then I can put a soul from a card on the field into the drop zone. If I do, gauge one, gain a life, so I get to nullify, trigger, and an ambush, uh, gain a gauge, and gain a life. Uh, very versatile. I think I'm, I'm thinking about bumping this back up to four of once I get more sleeves, which is really what is holding me back from making this a 55 card deck. Uh, but right now, it seems to be holding off okay at a 3 of because of the next card we're running. Uh, so we are running 3 Snake Gaze. Uh, snake Gaze is a very, very good control element right now. Uh, I believe it always has been. 
Uh, excuse me. Uh, so Snake Age is pay life counter, rest most of the opponent's field. We're in a quite the heavy meta for double, triple, and quadruple attack. And just for paying a life, we avoid taking a crap load of damage. Uh, the slow counter is bots, because while bots can't be destroyed, it can be rested. Um, it lets us hold off a Thura, who's got double attack. Uh, if they somehow get dynamite onto the field, you can immediately rest it, and you avoid their quadruple attack. Snake Ace right now, I just never saw a lot of people run it till now, and I would definitely say the time for this car to come back into the meta is definitely, definitely the time. Uh, I honestly don't know why anybody's not running at least three to four copies of this. I can only fit three at the moment. If I can, I'll add a fourth copy because this really needs to be maxed out. Uh, just because it's so needed right now in the meta. So, and even in my meta, it's definitely needed. Uh, this, would, this is going to save my butt so many times. But right now, we're running it at three of Okay, following this up, we got under under the table. Uh, under the table is again uh, costless. I get to gauge two and gain a life. And if it comes in uh, from being destroyed in the soul of a Oni assassin, I get to gauge three. So I get to either gauge two and gain a life, or I get to gauge three if this comes in. Uh, from being used in an Oni soul. So this sets up a lot of good plays. Uh, finally, we're running three of Hidden Oni. I hope that card is well seen because of the double rarity view. So we got Hiding Oni. Uh, full were pretty much set of best. This is one of the best draw cards draw engines in the game right now because it goes on theme, it's costless, uh, you're getting a bonus by triggering ambush for its call cost, uh, potentially, and you get to draw two cards and gain a gauge. Uh, its only drawback is its balance out that can only be used once per turn, but you do nothing but profit off of this. Because if you even, if you, uh, Ambush Amino Jaku to pay for the cost of this. You get to draw three cards and gain a gauge and don't lose anything for it, really. You get nothing but pluses in this deck with this card. It's amazing. So, fully agree with four. I'm only running it out of three of. Uh, again, this is another card that I probably need to be running it out of four, but due to size limitation right now, I'm running it out of three. And then the final two cards of the deck are... Where are you? Uh, underhanded Sneak Attack, uh, cast cost is put a soul from Oni Assassin from my field and drop zone. Uh, I get to trigger Ambush for playing another spell that uh, controls the field and gives me a bonus. So again, this card is fantastic. I feel like Terrence saying it's super good all the time, but really, uh, I'm really, really impressed on just how versatile, how in sync with uh, the gimmick of the deck is and how much almost every card profits you in this deck. So I'm sorry if I'm reiterating myself on Fantastics and it's good and it's very good, but it's just amazing how well this deck it, uh, flows and functions. So it's a counter speed, destroy a card in the opponent's field. Uh, I love that it's counter speed. I love even more that it's a card, meaning you can hit set spells, you can hit weapons, monsters, and it just flat blows it up. Um, my only regret is I can't get rid of Dragon Forces. But, you know, you can't have everything. So, that's it, guys, for me. Uh, I want to thank you for this long video. I apologize if I rambled any. Uh, it's just Oni Assassins are very wordy, but definitely worth it. I hope you guys like this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. We are really working hard to give you guys five, day five days worth of content at all times. Um... We're just working really, really hard for you guys. We recently hit uh, 
over 200 subscribers. I want to thank everybody so much that has jumped on board with us. Uh, we got a lot of great commenters that we interact with. I read the comments every as soon as they come up if I can. I try to answer them as quickly as possible. We love the questions you guys are getting. We love the criticism you guys are giving us too because that's only making us better and making sure we provide good content for you, the viewers. So again, thank you very much for hit, helping us hit over 200 subscribers. It really means a lot to me. It means a lot to the guys. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much.